Hey there, I'm playing with Chunk again and this time I have another device from the category Weird Electronic Stuff with some Esoteric Functions. This time I'm talking about Magnetic Field Therapy. Before I start with the technical details I want to show you the bill that came with this unit. Uh, the total cost was 4,248 Swiss francs, which is at the moment about the same or a little bit more in US dollars. So it's a lot of money. And what you get is the e MRS human. There is also a version for animals, including sensor. So that's the unit here. Um, let me see, that's the sensor. It's a, a finger clip sensor, as you know it from pulse oximeter, so I think this only measures the pulse. Here in the manual they call it heart rate variability. So it's not only pulse, it's also the stability of your pulse, how much it deflects from time to time and so on. Then we get the human body applicator and the human local applicator. That's two mats, one you can lie on and the other one you can wrap around your neck or whatever. I will show you that a little bit later. We get a uh, power supply, that's a big, big chunky transformer with 15 volt, 2 amps AC secondary, so that's only a transformer. You can also see the cable is already falling apart, I mean it's from 2004, okay, should not be like that. We have accessories. Well, I think that's all the brochures here, nice people, shiny pictures, girls in swimsuit, um, some more pictures and a big book that explains everything with a lot of colored photos. We get a chip card, yes, that's the one here. The unit doesn't work without the chip card and the chip card is 218 francs extra. I don't know why this costs extra if the unit doesn't work without it, but it is as it is. And we get the human uh, wand applicator, the human probe applicator for 525 Swiss francs comes in a box, looks like a large thing for sexual pleasure, but it isn't meant for that, has an XLR plug. It is very heavy, so I assume it's a coil with an iron core, encased in a plastic tube with some end caps, maybe Oh, no, it's glued in place. So that's 525 francs extra for this. And as I said before, that's the human applicator, the large mat here, which is a, a soft mat with a wire connector, XLR plug. And that's the small applicator, it's the same material, just a smaller thing with the same connector, white cable. That's what you use to wrap it around your neck or your knee or wherever your problems are. And that's the large mat where you can lie uh, entirely flat on the floor. That's what it is meant for. Okay, before we start with the hardware, we 
take a look in the, uh, into this book here from Doctor of Medicine Universal Christian Tuil. And uh, he writes a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff about the electromagnetic fields, how they interact with your body, with your cells. And I must say it sounds pretty convincing because, well, it's relatively difficult to, well, um, prove if it's wrong or if it's right. And I think it's one of these things you have to believe it or you don't believe it and then it doesn't work. Yeah, it's a pretty nice made book. It's good to read. It's interesting. But you don't know if it's all true. And of course it goes into the aura photography and some other slightly esoteric issues. Yeah, believe it or believe it not. Uh, interesting here is the index of the literature which is uh, cited here in the book and uh, I try to figure out what's all about for the first couple of entries here and there are a couple of esoteric um, articles, a couple of articles that are completely not relevant for this uh, issue. Here, for example, it's, uh, no, it's not that. Well, there are uh, articles about strong magnetic fields, how they affect the body, but that's not what we are doing here. We are talking about weak magnetic fields and so on. So let's go to the device and let's take it apart. But before I I take it apart I want to turn it on because well you want to see how it works right okay power on um, it makes a sound that should probably be something like a dolphin and by the way the whole device is shaped like a dolphin which is pretty neat here in the handle there is space for a, a battery which is not included in this set here and it recognized the small pad where you can lie your hands on or whatever you want to magnetize then we have a button for the strength in percent so it goes from 10 up to 200 whatever that means let's go to 50 right in the middle then we have a timer so at the moment we are at 8 minutes 16 minutes 24 minutes and back to 8 then we have different programs but it seems that doesn't work with the small mat, so there is only program 13. Uh, the card is inserted. Without the card we cannot do anything. And here nothing to change. And when we start that, you see this graphic animation here, radiating. You cannot change anything now and after eight minutes it will stop unless you press the stop button by yourself okay so that's how it works it has three outlets for three different or three times the same thing so it doesn't matter which one you take i guess they are all uh, connected in parallel we have a usb port we have a port for glasses that are that some kind of 
of this uh, sleeping uh, covers you, you put on on airplanes but with, with LEDs, LEDs inside so I guess they make some cold, colored patterns or any kind of thing that you can see in color uh, that's the connector for this heart rate pulse uh, sensor and we have a headphone jack that just uh, gets the same uh, music as you can hear through the speaker okay that one so okay it seems it recognizes we are now nothing is connected okay so there is some sort of mechanism to recognize what kind of pad is attached and yes i have already solved that miracle there is a resistor in here and i guess every different pad or applicator has a different resistor this resistor is recognized by the system and then it knows what kind of thing you actually connected okay let's see how the electrical output looks like i connected my oscilloscope to the connector here that's a good thing about the xlr connectors that can be screwed open you can access the contacts and it looks like that oops sorry so we see a signal that looks a little bit like a stair so like a stair uh, yes um, the maximum voltage is about one volt two uh, units of 500 millivolts and if you change that let me go to so it turns on and off from time to time uh, i stop that that is now 100 percent let's go to 200 and you can see the signal is larger it is now about two volts almost and what's also interesting when you start the machine now it needs a couple of seconds to build up that signal why ever and of course if you go to 50 percent it's only uh, 500 millivolts so the percents that are set on the unit uh, will go directly into uh, volts output so 50% is 500 millivolt 100% is 1 volt 200% is 2 volt yeah with this uh, small mat attached here the next question is how strong is the magnetic field so in the book they are talking about the magnetic field of earth which is 30 to 60 micro tesla uh, i think that's true uh, but uh, they have no data about the, uh, the field strength the magnetic field here on uh, on the mat but i have an iphone i have a nice app from the uh, university of aachen in germany and it's, it's called um, firefox or fi box fi firefox so that's a pretty neat app uh, I don't know if it's available in English it's available in German of course uh, and it uses all the sensors you have in your phone so depending on what phone you have you have 
more or less uh, features here that are available. So for example, acceleration, gyroscope, air pressure, if you have a, a, an air pressure sensor inside, magnetic field, GPS, uh, yeah, so magnetic field. No, that's not what I want. Uh, magnetic field spectrum, that's interesting. So let's go on. And it goes from 0 to about 50 Hertz. So that's the maximum this sensor here in the phone can handle. And we also can have this waterfall um, num, 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 screen graphic. And let's see if something change, changes when we turn on the thing. Oh, it's already on, so let's turn it off. Okay, it's off now. All right, so it's currently off and I turn it on. And you can clearly see something changes. And I think here we can see the startup and then the signal when it's established and on full uh, strength. And you can also see it here. I turned it on and now it pulls us on and off and on and off somehow like that or it's just between two readings. Uh, we can also see the raw data. So here you see uh, the individual pulses from a uh, what is it? Uh, X, Y and Z uh, orientation. So it depends on how your uh, phone is oriented on this mat, but yeah. Um, we can see we are now on 50%. We have here a peak of 30 micro Tesla. That goes negative, so let's say 20, and we have 43 here. And we have a positive. Oh, which one is set? Okay, doesn't matter. So let's say we are something somewhere between 30 and 50 micro Tesla, depending on in which axis we are actually measuring. So let's go to 100, so 30 to 50. Let's go to 100%. We are now 60, that's the double of the 30. We have still 50 about here, so let's take this one. I think that's the more accurate graph here. So we have 60 micro Tesla at 100%. And if we go to 200, I would expect 120. Yeah, it's 100 and yeah, it could be 120. Well, yeah, it almost 150, yes. Yeah, okay, so the magnetic field changes according to the percent settings we we set here uh, stop that yeah and of course the uh, scale changes automatically so now it picks up the usual random noise uh, by the way if you using this app near a train station here in switzerland for example you're picking up 16 and a third hertz, 16.666 hertz. That's the frequency of the train uh, power supply of the overhead uh, lines for the electric trains. It's one third of 50 hertz, so that's the relation why they came to 16. Point Six and the reason is they say the lower the frequency, the more 
torque you have to accelerate so DC would be the best but difficult to handle so that's a compromise okay uh, yeah that's it about the magnetic field here the staircase signal I showed you on the oscilloscope well they call it a sawtooth signal because it looks like the tooth of a of a saw, the teeth of a saw, and yeah, that's again an example that they are exactly doing what they are talking about in the book, in the theory. So nobody can say they are not doing what they promise. The question is just, does it work as they claim here in the book? Well, let's have a look inside. Even if I'm not so much a friend of Delph in my, I mean, I don't hate them, but yeah, Delph dolphins, okay. They're nice, they're cute. I don't know why they have chosen dolphin design, but I like the attention to detail. This screw is the eye of the dolphin. It's about on the right spot. This screw is, well, just necessary. Same on the other side. Yeah, I, I, I like it, but I mean, it doesn't make up for the 4,000 and something francs that it costs just because it is dolphin shaped. Uh, that doesn't mean it has to be that expensive. So let's see what is hiding inside the magical device yes one dolphin's out there is a some sort of PCB connector yes okay dolphin and there is the battery for a clock uh, the clock backup battery that's also attention to detail you can replace it without opening the entire device that's pretty nice that's the connector for the battery pack battery pack goes in here there is a cable you plug it in here it's a rechargeable battery so fine I don't know why it is not included uh, in this huge price but yeah so what's next by the way that's the manufacturer Biomedis International in Balzers that's in the uh, Principality of Liechtenstein neighbor country to Switzerland uh, interesting fact is the company doesn't exist anymore but there is now a company called iLife International which is also located in Balzers and it's only uh, about 300 meters away from this address so I'm pretty sure it's probably the same company with a new name, iLife. When we talk about build quality, so I have nothing to complain about this device. There are a couple of screws. When you remove them, you can simply lift out the entire electronic board. You can disconnect the cell battery here. And it has a small board with the buttons on off start stop and the four menu buttons for the display it's not a touch display and that big black thing here <coughs> is the socket for the chip card it goes in here so that's just a heatsink for two large transistors here we have the AC input, AC input filter, 
full bridge rectifier DC input to capacitors and then that's that looks like the power supply DC converter here fuses uh, probably a real-time clock chip from Philips is connected close to this battery connector so I assume it's some real-time clock oh the buttons fell off okay so they're just uh, locked onto these stems here uh, I would say that's the CPU and that's an interesting little chip it's the FTDI FT232AM so that converts USB to RS232 so it's a serial port on the other end and that goes to the microprocessor for programming or setup or whatever they programmed into that thing so there are four screws I already removed them nothing to fear on the back side and there is the display there's a large connector here it is based on the Toshiba uh, display controller and that's the display drivers for the individual pixels yeah you probably know that it's a standard display I don't know EDT is that the manufacturer probably yes most likely comes from China not even marked like that could also be a European product who knows so back side of the board nothing special we have the three applicator connectors from Neutrik not the cheapest ones but hey they cost 4000 bucks you can use better connectors and yes they also look pretty decent yeah but that's it it's a CPU it's a display and it generates the pulses we have seen on the oscilloscope and the last thing to take apart is of course one of the mats so I take the smaller apart because the large one is basically the same but well larger and it is stated in the uh, manual that the outer sleeve can be removed or at least it, it's well uh, washable so there is a, a zipper around it and they did it pretty interesting so that's the start of the zipper they just shoved it into this pillow and all you see is this so that's pretty nice technique so let's unzip that goes around and around and probably around yes okay and it has some yellow foam in it which is pretty sticky on one side yes uh, I guess they use some spray adhesive here yep so and that's the coil Wah. sticky stuff which is also sticky and you see the pattern how they laid it out and it has uh, I have the feeling they made it entirely by hand so we are coming in with this uh, you know what let's remove it completely so we can see it from both sides and yeah no I don't want to use it again so I don't take a lot of care so okay so that's a standard 
mains cable, a three uh, wire mains cable, but they're only using two wires. So they go in here and go out with the white cables that are stitched to this mat here. And they go in here into the center and they spiral out and then spiral out, spiral out and go to that uh, center here and spiral out in the other direction and then end up here on the cable side. So the whole thing is of course flexible. What kind of wire did I use? I think it's standard wires. This is something about 500 volt. Okay, a lot of insulation. Maybe not necessary because you only have millivolts of uh, signal here. Yeah, that's it. That's the whole thing. And I'd say the large mat probably has multiple zones like that, or maybe too large, or... Yeah, believe it or not, that's it for today. Oops, and before I forget, I want to see what's inside this manual applicator. So, it seems they wrapped it with some heat shrink tube. There are two caps. One is screwed inside here and the other one around here. And uh, it's not a coil with a, uh, with a iron core. It's a, a coil with an iron core and an iron outer shell in a tube. So it's somehow it's glued in. I tried to heat it up, maybe. It, I thought it's probably only um, hot glue, but they took something a little bit better, perhaps some silicone. But uh, I don't know if you can see it here. Yes, there is a little bit of copper wire visible. Yeah, so the copper wire is between the inner core and this outer core and in fact, well, there is an air gap here. So I assume that the magnetic flux comes out through that gap, probably here too. I think that's, that's the idea that you use it on, for example, if you have pain in your hand, you use it like that and I don't know. Certainly no magnetic field around here because that's a solid tube and yes, it is magnetic. Yeah. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching. <music>